Okay, welcome back class to the section on ellipses. So an ellipse is essentially like an oval um, and it is related to a circle that's kind of been squashed or something. Um, so it's a set of all points x, y, the sum of whose distance from two distinct points called the foci, so two distinct points, um, which is constant. So you're going to have what's called the foci out here and I'm going to label those with an F for foci and they lie on what's called the major axis. So this long one here is the major axis um, and on the major axis also lie the two vertices there which we label with a V. So the vertices and the foci always lie on the major axis and you also have another axis called the minor axis which is this vertical one here and it crosses the major axis at a perpendicular and it goes through what's called the center of the circle. Okay, so I'm just going to zoom in and make a larger picture here and label those things. So you have the center, which I'm going to label with a Z, only because C for center is used for something else. You have the two vertices on the outside, the endpoints of the minor axis, um, and then you have the foci, which lie on the major axis line that goes to the center and the foci. Okay, so I think we talked about um, all of those definitions. Um, so I'm just going to label a couple more things on the axes. So we have that distance from the center to the endpoint of the minor axis, from the center to the endpoint of the major axis, and we have the distance from the center to the foci. So with these three distances, they are called A, B, and C specifically. So A is the distance from the center to the vertex, B is the center to the endpoint of the minor axis, and C is the distance from the center to the foci. Okay, so if you understand what all of those letters mean, um, then it'll be similar to parabolas where you don't have to memorize everything, um, you just have to understand what they're saying. Okay, so we um, do know that B is going to be less than A, and both of those numbers are going to be bigger than zero. And B being less than A just means, well, B is the distance from the center to the endpoint of the minor axis. And that just tells you that the minor axis is always going to be smaller than the major axis. Um, and as a note, if A equals B, then those two distances are equal, and then you have a circle. Um, so when you have the equation for the ellipse, which is down here, we have when the major axis is horizontal versus vertical, just like we had two equations for the ellipse, and um, it is very similar to the circle, but you have A squared and B squared, but if they were both the same, they both are called, say, A squared, or let's just call them R squared, for example, then you multiply it over here to the other side, and you have the equation for a circle. So the ellipse and the circle are very, very similar. Okay, so what we're going to do is notice the differences between the horizontal and the vertical. Um, so for the when the major axis is horizontal, the A squared, which is the bigger number, remember A is the bigger number, is under the X which is going along in the x direction when the a is bigger. But when the major axis is vertical, the distance a is still, as you can see here, the distance along the major axis, and b, since this whole thing is 2b, b is still the distance along the minor axis, 2b being the length of the entire minor axis. Um, so, but here, you have the m smaller number right, because B is the smaller number, is under the X, so going in the X direction, you have the smaller number, okay, and then the bigger number, A squared, which is the bigger number, um, is under the Y, telling you that it's vertical. So when you have your equations to determine if it's horizontal or vertical, you just look for the bigger number under the A or under the B. Um, if the bigger number is under, sorry, the bigger number under the X, then it's longer horizontally. If the bigger number is under the Y, then it's longer vertically. So those are the two things. Very, very similar equation to the, the circle. Um, the center, just like the circle, is HK. Um, the vertices, um, if you think about it, if you have your axes kind of set up here, it's going to be the same idea. Um, if this is my origin over there, you go over H and up K, so you have your H and your K to get to a vertex, 
you go over H and you add C and you subtract, or sorry, you add A and subtract A because the distance to the vertex is A. Okay, so you go over H and you add A and then you subtract A. So the, ver the vertex is H plus A comma K and H minus A comma K. Same idea here. When it's vertical, the center is at H comma K to get to your vertices, which is the endpoints of the major axis. You go over H, well, and that's your X coordinate, but your Y coordinate changes. So you go over H and then you go up K and you have to add A and subtract A. So it's K plus or minus, oops, plus or minus A because you go up and down A this distance being A, right? The distance to your, from the center to the endpoint of your major axis. Okay, so those were the vertices. The foci is very similar. Um, so the foci lie on the line with the vertex, and the foci, if you look at your diagram up above, it's the distance from the center out there was called C. So instead of going over a to the end point of the major axis, you go over C. So it's going to be H plus or minus C comma K and H comma K plus or minus C because we're going to go up C and down C. So we're going to go up K, add C, and go up K and go down C. So we have plus or minus C. The major axis is the length um, and it's 2a because it's from the center to the endpoint of the major axis of the vertex is this it's a so the whole length is 2a um, and likewise over here it's just going up and down and the minor axis is 2b same idea because b is the center um, to the endpoint of the minor axis the endpoints of the minor axis they don't have a fancy name um, but you have the endpoints of the minor axis we can find those coordinates um, you go over H, and then f you go up K to get to the center, and you add B and subtract B, because B is defined as the distance to the endpoint of the minor axis. So it's K plus or minus B. Um, and then over here, you go over H, and then to get to your endpoints of your minor axis, you're going to, from H, subtract B and add B. So it's H plus or minus B, and then it's up K. And the eccentricity um, is just the definition, and the eccentricity measures the ovalness of the ellipse, and it's always a number between 0 and 1. The eccentricity is defined to be C over A um, for both of them. So the eccentri eccentricity, we'll investigate that later, um, but it just defines the ovalness. It does it look flat, or does it look more round? Okay, I've just scrolled down a little bit. I've talked about the eccentricity measuring the ovalness. Um, I've talked about the foci how it lies on the major axis C units from the center. Um, but the very important thing is the relationship between A, B, and C. Um, C squared equals A squared minus B squared. Okay, similar to the Pythagorean theorem, but it's A squared minus B squared. So that is one thing that you are going to have to memorize. Um, because essentially you'll be given A and B, and you'll have to find C, or you'll be given other parts of information, two of the three. Um, and I did say that if A equals B, then you have what's called a circle. So this kind of just walks you through the circle. Okay, so I'm just going to scroll down a little bit more and we'll get started on the exercise. Okay, for example one, we're going to have to find all the parts um, of the ellipse and sketch the graph. So you might need to flip back and forth um, so that you can see the standard form. So in order to find all of these things, we're going to have to find the standard form of the equation. And in order to put it in standard form, we're going to have to complete the square. So I'm going to group my x's and my y's together, and then I'm going to bring my coefficient of 2 to the other side. So I have x squared minus 6x. I'm going to leave some space, so I'm grouping my x's. I'm going to group my y's together, 4y squared plus 20y. Leave some space, and then I'm going to add 2 to the other side, so that equals 2. So I just rearrange things. Okay, so in order to get it in the standard form, I have to complete the square twice. So I'm going to complete the square with the first time, and it's just like with the parabolas. So you take half of your negative 6, which is negative 3, and then you square it and it becomes 9, because minus b squared is positive 9. If I add 9 there, 
I have to add 9 to the other side of the equation. Now, when you have a coefficient in front of your y squared or any term, you have to factor that out before um, you are able to um, complete the square. And I realized I wrote 2, but I really should have written 20 because my uh, problem says plus 20y. So what I have to do is I have to factor out a 4 out of both of those terms. So I'm going to pull out the 4 and I have y squared plus 5y blank equals. So I factored a 4 out of the first four, first two terms and so far I have 11. So now I'm going to be ready to complete the square. So I'm going to bring my x term down just to have it down, plus 4, um, and then it's going to be y. And you take half of that number, and half of that number, well, it's just the fraction 5 over 2. And I am insisting that you use fractions and that you do not use decimals. So 5 over 2 squared, square the top and square the bottom. That becomes 25 over 4. Um, and the tricky part, if you remember from Algebra 2, was that you really need to multiply both of those terms together because what you really added was 4 times 25 over 2. So I'm going to add 4 times 25 over 4, 4 times 25 over 4, which is really just 25 to that side, and 25 plus 11 is 36. Now standard form of the equation, it's set equal to 1, so I'm going to divide both sides by 36. And rewrite it, x minus 3 squared over 36 plus, you have to simplify these because in standard form you don't have a coefficient out there, so you have to divide those. Um, so it ends up being over 9, and you have y plus 5 over 2 squared equals 1. So now this is the standard form and you notice that the bigger number here that's my a squared, this is my b squared. Um, so since the bigger number is under the x, it's going to be longer in the x direction, so it's going to be a horizontal major axis. And if the bigger number was under the y, I'll say if those two were slipped, then the major axis would be vertical. Okay, so now we can go about and we can find the center. Um, so the center is h comma k. Remember, it's opposite signs, so it's 3 comma minus 5 over 2. Okay, and minus 5 over 2, you know, is 2.5, which we'll need to use that in order to graph it. Um, so let me just scroll down a little bit. Okay, so what we can do is we can go ahead and graph the center. Um, so I have the origin over here, and I'm going to go right three, one, two, three, and down 2.5, and that's going to be the center um, of it, and I'm going to mark that with a Z for center. Um, and then I know that my A squared is 36, so that tells me that A is 6, my B squared is 9, so that tells me that B is 3. Oh, let me write this 6 more like a 6. My A is and you know the formula from the back side said that a squared minus b squared is c squared, so we can use that to find c. So I know that 36 minus 9 is c squared, and 36 minus 9 is 27. So my c squared is 27, or my c is 3 root 3. <coughs> okay, so I have my center. I'm going to change the color. Um, I know A, the distance along the major axis is 6. So I'm going to go 6 in either direction horizontally. And I know to go horizontally because the bigger number is from the x. Okay, so I'm going to go 6 in either direction from the center. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And that is one of my vertices. I go 6 in the other direction. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And that's the other vertex. So we were asked to find the vertices. And the equation, or sorry, the, the values there. Well, I went over 3 and I went over 6 more. So that must be 9. And it was over 3 and I went 6 that way. So that must be at minus 3. So the the vertices were at 
minus 3 comma minus 2.5 and at 9 comma minus